Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one half of Team Benson. And today's video is going to be about how to use herbs in order to keep healthy plants. But first, you have to see this. Okay guys, if you guys have been following my channel, you know that I have a Anaheim pepper, it's a poblano pepper that I have been trying to grow since, I don't know, maybe like June, <laughs> maybe May. No, I think I planted it in May. And this thing has died, it's been infected, it's been everything. And I think I've learned way more gardening in this year of gardening from this one plant that I have been trying to keep healthy, learn how to do, uh, like how to plant in pots, um, for small space gardening, learn how to keep soil healthy, learn how to keep bugs off of it organically, and it finally is giving me a pepper. Okay guys, there it is. I don't want to touch it because I don't want to ruin it, but there it is. There is also another one right here. Don't want to touch it, don't want to ruin it, but there it is. I'm so excited this plant has put me through the ringer and I think it's been through the ringer but we are starting to finally finally after so long get some peppers so I find that so insane because I literally can grow hundreds of shishito peppers like and jalapeno peppers but for some reason this poblano pepper does not want to give me just one, just one, that's all I wanted, it was just one poblano pepper. Over the hundreds of shishito peppers and hundreds of jalapeno peppers, I didn't get one poblano pepper this summer, guys, but I will now. Okay, guys, so what we're really here for is how do we maintain a small space garden where you can plant enough food for your family and actually be able to not have to go to a grocery store and to keep everything healthy because if you're trying to plant enough food for your family in a small space that means you're going to have to really tightly condense everything so a lot of my plants don't get as big as some of the other people's plants that have tons of room they still produce fruit they still give me a lot of food but they don't get massively large which is good I don't want them to get massively large because they have a friend right next to it um, but the other thing that I do in order to uh, make sure my plants stay healthy um, is I plant herbs. So I have herbs and some collards and some Jersey cabbage and I have dill and cilantro and sage and parsley. Um, and I also used basil a lot. As you guys can see if you're watching my Insta following my Instagram, I have one really huge basil next to my tomato and one small basil next to my tomato. Those basils are going to get huge and I'm going to be able to use them for pestos. Um, I make caprese salad like almost every day because we love caprese salad and all different other types of things for spaghettis and all that but when the tomato plant gets to the point to where it's starting to get bugs attracted to it then the bugs typically usually go to the basil first and so it, it kind of works in this relationship that when the plant's really small the basil protects it and then as the plant gets bigger and as it's growing then the basil grows back I'm able to eat the basil then the tomato is able to get fully grown produce tomatoes and then as that's starting to die back then the tomatoes or usually the bugs eat the basil leave the tomatoes alone just enough for me to let the last ones ripen and then it reverses the tomatoes get the bugs and the basil then is able to grow back because the tomato dies back this makes it to where I don't have to spend hours pulling things out of the garden because I just not naturally let them die and naturally let whatever is next to them kind of take over, which is usually a herb. So usually I get to collect all of the herbs and be able to dry them as they're getting big and they're getting a chance to really grow as the uh, vegetables that I plant next to it are starting to die back or I'm just picking them. So some of this is proven fact because I have done it before. <laughs> I did it a lot with basil and also cilantro last year. And then some of it is just going to be experimenting because that is what we're here for. If you watch my videos to see if it works for me, then maybe it might work for you. So I'm going to take collards 
and I'm going to mix them with let's do cilantro so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant a row of collards and then a row of cilantro and then if I have enough another row of collards another row of cilantro and we're gonna alternate them so let's go see if that works So I'm going to start off with the dill, hopefully you guys can see that, I'm trying to work with some angles here, I'm going to peel that off, and then I'm just going to plant these up. Okay, so now that the dill is planted, then I'm going to take, let's do the collards, which are these, and I'm going to put them right next to them. Now, we don't eat collards that often, but we do eat them enough, so I'm going to give them a little bit more space. I put the dill a little bit closer to the celery because I like to freeze my celery, so I only let my celery get so big, and the dill I only let get so big, so that's going to kind of work. Um, I'm thinking maybe the collards, I'm not measuring here, and I probably should have bred the packet, but I'm going to plant them maybe a right here, so then that gives them enough room to push out. I'm going to go ahead and finish planting this row. Okay guys, so as you can see, this is how I did it. I have the uh, celery over there, the dill, and then the collards. Um, the collards I did give a little bit more room. I planted the dill a little bit closer to the celery, um, but the collards I gave a little bit more room. And then we had a collar accident, and I broke one, so now this space is open. So we'll see what can go there. Okay, so that was the first pairing. The next one I'm going to do is, let's do Jersey Cabbage, which I only have a couple of these, and we're going to do Cilantro. So last year my Cilantro did amazing during the winter here, like it was full Cilantro from like, I want to say around like November all the way up until about late spring. So, and in the late spring, then the caterpillars ate it. <laughs> so, which I didn't mind because we already had cilantro and everything. So I'm gonna try this pairing together and see how it works. Okay, so I got most of everything planted and I noticed a few things in my garden too that I wasn't so happy about. Um, my cucumber plant, which I'm starting to grow it out of season. I know, I already know that. Um, it is getting a little bit of AFibs at the base. I did trim them, um, the leaves on it, which cut down the aphid population and it'll let the flowers kind of grow and get seen and get pollinated by the bees. So now since I did that, I am getting actual female um, flowers. So I'm getting the little cucumbers and they have pollinated, I believe, because they are getting a little bit bigger. But what I'm gonna do is plant a bunch of herbs down below at the base of the cucumber plant. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So we have the same principle. Um, as you guys can see, I took all the lower leaves off at the bottom. So it was the lower leaves that were infected, not really, not any of the top leaves. And as you can see, I'm starting to get little cucumbers in there. So I took all the lower leaves off, um, just gave it a big pruning, and took the flowers off the lower ones because they were covered in aphids as well. And I'm going to give this a solid rinse to kind of rinse off any aphids that are left on it. And I'm taking all of my herbs and kind of planting around it. This is some leftover dill, so I'm going to plant the dill right there. When the sage gets a little bit bigger, I'm going to plant some more sage on the other side of here too as well. And we'll see if that protects it. Now gardening isn't a hundred percent science, so it's going to be a lot of trial and error. Um, that's something that I've learned and I feel like my poblano pepper plant, it is a great 
testimony to how if you just keep up with a little bit of love, a little bit of tension, don't just slam your plants with a bunch of pesticides and everything like that. Just try and figure out what it needs, give it some love, and it'll grow for you guys. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps, and I hope you are experimenting too in your garden. Bye guys!